Hi, this is Starkey Sowers. Welcome again to another Plus Program training series. Today's topic is digestion, and this is part two. So we're gonna do a little review of digestion from part one. When we look at digestion, a couple of unique things. Remember that anything that enters into the body actually has to be digested and assimilated or sucked into the bloodstream and ultimately into the cells. Unless we're actually digesting and assimilating the foods that we're putting into our system, we're actually getting no value out of it. I used the illustration last time of actually ingesting a penny. And I'm sure you've seen somebody do this or heard about this situation. Ultimately, when the penny goes into the system, as it goes through the digestive tract or the alimentary tract, it actually never gets assimilated into the cells. It actually just becomes the same thing when it goes in and all the way through the body as it goes out. It's still a penny. Ultimately, same thing with foods. If you put foods in and they're not digested and assimilated into the body, then they actually have no value whatsoever. So when we look at the digestion and assimilation of foods, there's a couple critical things. Remember that there's nutrients found in foods and we're bo our bodies actually have to have these nutrients every single day to be able to not only to function energy wise, mental uh, clarity, things of that nature, but also to rebuild the body that you actually live in. And so those particular nutrients actually fall into a couple different categories. The first category is what we call macronutrients, proteins, fats, carbohydrates. And those are the things that provide calories or energy, as well as also structural components for the body to be able to rebuild itself. Second on the list is micronutrients, and those micronutrients are gonna be vitamins and minerals. So if you wanna kinda of stretch it open a little bit, think about minerals along with proteins, they actually become the bones, all right? So without those combination of nutrients together, macro and micro working together, we can't rebuild the body that you actually live in, all right? So digestion and assimilation is the first place for health to start. So if we haven't got good digestion, we don't have good systems and good bodies. Very simply, bluntly put. All right. So keep that in mind as we're going through this. So one of the things that we want to do is kind of maybe review the digestive system, look at it maybe a little bit more in, in depthly on this particular uh, time, and then move on to maybe some complications with the digestive system. So looking at the digestive system, we see a couple unique things. First of all, last time we talked about the mouth and chewing, and you want to chew your foods like maybe 20 to 50 times is what a lot of the experts say. A lot of us, including myself, have a tendency not to do this. This One of the things to remember when we do chew effectively and can consistently you, taking all of our foods into the system, we break it down into much smaller pieces. It makes a lot less effort, so to speak, for the digestive system have to continue to break that food down. Remember also that a raisin is roughly about a thousand times too large, so the body's got to break that down. And a sesame seed is a hundred times too large for the body to be able to assimilate it, so that's got to be broken down. So when we chew our foods, we ultimately make them smaller in pieces and make it more effective. So then when we swallow the food, it goes to the stomach. And ultimately what happens at the stomach is this, it produces hydrochloric acid and pepsin. Hydrochloric acid and pepsin are very caustic or very acidic. That's the reason why they call it hydrochloric acid, obviously, right? All right so if you took hydrochloric acid out in a fluid sense and actually put it on like maybe a countertop, it literally would dissolve the metal or the wood or the plastic that is there. The body actually has in the digestive system a mucous membrane system that actually secretes during the time that hydrochloric acid is released and prevents it from actually burning a hole in the stomach. All right, so what does hydrochloric acid and pepsin do so effectively? Two things. Number one, it breaks down or kills a large percentage of the bacteria that you might have consumed from some of the foods that you've eaten. Maybe it wasn't prepared properly or something of that nature. Hydrochloric acid is like a safety system. Some people say it's like the second immune system, prevents your body from getting sick. All right. The other thing that happens with hydrochloric acid and pepsin, if there's any type of proteins present in the foods that you consume, it starts the protein breakdown process initially there in the stomach. All right, so two key factors. Now as the food moves through the stomach into the small intestine, remember there's roughly about 22 feet, maybe 26 feet of small intestine. It's a long way, all right? So the first foot has what we call an entry port for the pancreatic enzymes from the pancreas, and also from the bile, we have a bile duct that comes in. So if there's any types of fat present, the body actually releases bile and it actually emulsifies fats. So what does that mean to emulsify? So if you 
ever taken water and maybe fats and maybe like made a salad dressing and put the two of those things together? They repel each other. Emulsification means it breaks it down into fine, tiny little droplets so the body can digest it. So the enzymes that come out of the pancreas are protease for proteins, lipase for fats, and also amylase for starch. Probably 90% of all the digestion of nutrients takes place out of the pancreas and its enzyme systems, roughly producing about 30 grams of enzymes a day. All right, so that kind of maybe gives you a little bit more of a, a focus, so to speak. So what about digestive disorders? And let's say you eat a meal, you're full, and you know you feel like indigestion, or you just like gas, bloating, diarrhea, all these different types of complications are probably simple indigestion actions that are taking place. There's also more complex things, such as IBS, as well as things like Crohn's and things of that nature. And you definitely wanna make sure that you connect with a doctor if you've got situations like that happening. But one of the things that has been done for years is this, the use of enzymes. The use of enzymes have probably been in place for over 80 years. And what they basically do is they kind of help to restore, so to speak, the enzymes being lost in the body. When you're roughly about 18 years old, your body produces about a quart of hydrochloric acid fluid a day and roughly a pint of pancreatic enzymes a day. Well, when you're 50, it's about half that. And so the age-related decline of enzymes typically are met very well when using supplemental enzymes. For years, people used what we call animal enzymes, pancreatic enzymes or pancretin, along with hydrochloric acid, oftentimes derived from animal sources. So those are very effective in accelerating and improving digestion, but a lot of people didn't like the animal source. Well, now we have what we call vegetable analogs, and these analogs being similar to these pancreatic enzymes Protease, amylase, and lipase are actually created from vegetable sources. Just as effective and in some cases, more effective. Some of you guys also might be thinking, well, what about foods? I don't necessarily want to take a pill. What about foods? Well, bitters have been in use for hundreds of years, and bitters are very effective in stimulating the digestive system and becoming very popular again. Another great food is ginger. Ginger helps to stimulate the peristaltic action, help to improve digestion. Another great food of use is aloe. Aloe is excellent for kind of healing and soothing up irritated mucous membranes, maybe from some types of reflux and things of that nature. All right, so that kind of wraps up this whole series on digestion, gives you a little bit of enzymes uh, information, as well as some information on how the digestive system works, and may, maybe make you feel a little bit more comfortable about using enzyme in case you've got some digestive complaints. This is Starkey Sowers. Thanks again for watching another Plus Program training series.